On today's mega show, the Audi e-tron sportsback, 3D printed EVs and well, Cobalt gets some questionable tech and well, that and a lot more. G'day everyone, my name is Chris and well, this is your show on everything happening in Australia and well, sometimes around the world in the space of EVs, renewables and other technologies that make our life cleaner and greener. If you're new to the channel, welcome. If you're a returning subscriber, thanks for coming back. And a big awesome shout out to my awesome Patreons, and especially like Ray and Angelo who are at the producer level, so they get the name on screen each and every episode. And well, let me kick this off by starting with this is a mega show what's a mega show here you ask well you may have noticed this last week that i started uploading a lot more often but small little stories okay so what the mega show is is basically i'm going to have some new content and i'm going to put that at the end of the episode and well the other stuff that i did last week is going to be at the front of the show but to help you out I'll put this little thing down here to help you navigate to where you want to see. So if you're a regular viewer, you can just go straight to the very end and watch the new stories. If you want to hear what people have written down in the comments and what my response to that is, jump to that section. You get the idea. And at the end, don't forget, I've got the uh, winner announcement for the Tesla Model 3 uh, performance pedals. And I've got another competition starting tomorrow, which if you don't win this, you can maybe win that. So hang around and let's get into this. First up, Ford has announced a Mustang badge pure electric crossover that will be sure to excite like a lot of Ford fans. The Mustang Mach-E, a five-seater mini SUV, has like a maximum driving range of 480 kilometers, a maximum battery capacity of nearly 100 kilowatt hours, and a zero to 100 time of about 3.5 seconds. Looking at this mini SUV, I do like its long hood, aggressive lines with high wheel arches and tri-bar tail lamps. The Mustang Mach-E will launch in the US um, in 2020, but well, it's a no for Australia. Website Car Advice obtained official word from Ford Australia who confirmed that we have no specific Australian or New Zealand news with regards to the Mackey. We do however look forward to starting our electrification journey with the Escape plug-in hybrid electric vehicle next year. Now, this is a shame and a missed opportunity which I hope Ford reverses as this thing will do well here. And it fills a segment that is only occupied by a similar looking car, the Hyundai Kona EV. In terms of specs, the Mach-E will be available in five trim levels from the entry level select premium through to the most expensive, the GT. Performance and trim changes obviously depend upon what you buy with the standard select getting a 75.7 kilowatt hour battery pack and optional 98.8 kilowatt hour extended range model. So all variants are built on like a brand new electric platform and feature a liquid cooled battery and on the underbody. All but the base car will have 150 kilowatt onboard DC fast charging capacity, with the base car getting look a respectable 150 kilowatts of peak power input, which like that's what the older Teslas used to get. Ballpark figure. Coming in two different drive configurations, the Mac E has either a rear wheel drive setup with 190 to 342 kilowatts of power, and those like they're impressive numbers which when considered along with its range of either 340 to 480 kilometers of range. Internally, it's a very futuristic affair with Ford's sync infotainment system adapted to that 15.5 inch vertical screen, which can take over the air updates. Oh, and uh, PS, Ford, um, will these be free? Maybe? For our lucky American cousins, Pricing is very much in line with the Tesla Model 3 with the entry model Select coming in around about $65,000 Australian to as high as $89,000 for the GT. And that's also obviously before our stamp duty, import taxes, lousy car tax, I mean luxury car tax. You get the idea. If you want more information, please do look at the links to this article and everything else I talked to on this episode below. Okay, Aussies, ready for some more bad news? Yep, I'm just a treasure trove of great positive vibes today, aren't I? No, not really. Anyway, 
Here we go. Kia Australia has announced that it's testing of the e Nero on our local roads and well, guess what? They decided that they're not gonna bring the electric car down under because of our government's failure to introduce legislation to reduce carbon emissions. Wait, what? What? Long as I don't break these Is this gonna be a promises segment? No. And for those new to the channel, Promises is about, is, it was my segment about what our politicians are and aren't doing in the space of renewables and getting us to a cleaner, greener form of transport. And well, this story does fit into that space, but today I'm not gonna do a deep dive. No, instead, I'll highlight some of the learnings that Bridie Schmidt uh, garnered from Kia Australia's Chief Operating Officer, Damien Meredith, that the e Nero may never actually make it here because, well, Kia wants to bring the e Nero to countries that have effective regulations that limit CO2 emissions that are already in place. Very good. You know something? <laughs> no soup for you! And as we all know, Australia does not have the mandates, and in fact, well, it seems to be pushing CO2 emissions up year on year, despite what some buffoons are saying. Mr. Meredith said that Kia's policy is that the e Nero goes to countries that have CO2 regulations and have legislation in place. That, that's the issue with us in relation to getting the e Nero. Okay, so does this then mean that Kia has supply issues and, well, maybe can't make enough of them to send them down under? Well, on first glance, no. See, Bridey reports that the Kia has been seeing sales in the, of the e Nero in Europe, with it's both hybrid as well as plug-in hybrid variants, as, well, as many as like 45,000 units have been sold in the first nine months of 2019. Now, for us Aussies who normally have to wait for like a right-hand drive version, you can actually buy the e-Nero in the UK right now. So I doubt they have supply issues, especially like when car makers like Tesla and well, VW's recent announcement that they're intending to produce several hundred thousand EVs in the 1920 fiscal year. So what needs to be done? Well, this is where you and I need to get busy. I've created a link below with every Australian parliamentarian who is, whose title is to like manage our CO2 emissions and policy and legislation around what our energy mix future looks like. What we all need to do is either call, meet, email, write to them, and well, let these ministers know that, that we want CO2 reductions now. And well, the best way for Australia to curb that, like knowing that we produce more than 20% CO2 emissions from the tailpipe, is to prioritize EVs, demand more stringent petrol standards, and incentivize drivers to electric cars. I mean, look to Europe, where the EU has successfully legislated car makers to meet the 95 grams of CO2 per kilometer um, by like 2021. Yeah, that's right, yeah. Or else, if they don't, they'll face heavy fines. Meanwhile, we get all the junk that car makers basically can't sell in those markets. That's a fact, and we've just seen that with the Enera. So, maybe, maybe then Kia and other car makers might change their minds and will bring cars like this to our roads. Now, remember to follow the links and well, get in contact with your local member. And all I ask is that you guys please keep your dialogue or messaging polite and sincere and that as a voter, you'll be paying attention to their party's stance on this and well, more. Volkswagen premiered another concept car, the ID Space Vision at the LA Auto Show. This car is based upon the Modular Electric Drive Matrix, or the MEB to you and me. And it's another one of those ID cars, which I'm kind of getting sick of, to be honest, because, you know, there's the ID3, the ID, well, I'll get to them in a minute. Anyway, it's promising, but as we all know, with concept cars, car makers, well, and VW is no different. They make a lot of promises, and they don't always come to fruition, but I'll go with them for the moment. So. This is now the seventh model of the MEB slash ID platform, where you've already got like the Cross, the Buzz, the Buggy, the Rooms. They don't make these things easy to say, especially when you've got braces. I digress. VW says that the Space Vision, Vision, is that how you say it? 
Correct me down below in the comments. I know you will. Anyway, they say that defines a completely new vehicle segment featuring aerodynamic design of a Gran Turismo with the space of an SUV and an airflow through the front end and a roof that contributes to an efficient aerodynamics, enab enabling a drag coefficient of 0 0.24. The car will feature an 82 kilowatt hour battery and can supposedly do about 590 kilometers on the WLTP real range test. Now, this this range is pretty astonishing as the Tesla standard range plus, the Model 3, like, is currently the king or queen. And well, in theory, if we applied that and you know gave the Tesla Model 3 standard range plus an 85 kilowatt hour battery pack, then it could actually get like 607 kilometers of range. So I'd love to see actually VW deliver on this supposed range, but we'll see, we'll see. VW is promising zippy performance with all wheel drive, electric motors producing like 250 kilowatts of power and a zero to 100 time of 5.4 seconds. Internally, this car is definitely in the concept future car space with a fully digitalized cockpit. Yeah, that's the words, not mine. An augmented reality heads up display and a 15.6 inch touchscreen, which appears to hover in midair. At present, it's only promised to Europe and North America in 2021, with no, year, no word yet from VW Australia on whether it will end up in the showroom near us in the near future. Okay, another concept car to last after. Today, Hyundai unveiled the Vision T plug-in hybrid SUV concept car at the 2019 Automobility Show in Los Angeles. The Vision T is like the seventh in a series of Hyundai Design Center concepts, and it's an SUV concept that is powered uh, as a plug-in hybrid powertrain, indicating its eco-lifestyle focus and inherent balance with the environment in which it's driven. Hyundai took up a lot of fluff around the design characteristics and the charisma that this car, car exudes, but what I found intriguing is the hidden signature lamp derived from the Le Fil Rouge and the Grandeur Lift. And well, they, this they claim will, at high speeds, use parametric air shutters to actively adjust both the aerodynamics and design appearance. When stationary, the grille is closed and static. Once in motion, each of the individual cell grilles continues to move in a prescribed sequence, creating a truly dynamic forward demeanor. Now, will that aerodynamic stuff truly deliver on both performance as well as range? Well, maybe, but hey, these guys with these big wing things, they seem to know what they're doing, so maybe, right? Maybe? <laughs> Details of the engine, electric motor, and more were not on the press release, and again, there's no Australian date. Hyundai has confirmed its 2020 Ionic electric specs, and well, they're looking a lot better than the 2016 first iteration. With a bump up in battery size from 28 to 38.3 kilowatt hours, the Ionic is capable of 270 kilometers of range, and that's like a 36% increase. An upgraded onboard 7.2 kilowatt charger is capable of 100 DC fast charging, and we we'll can see the new Ionic get like to 80% of charge in 54 minutes. They've upgraded their lane keep assist and radar cruise control, and now call them uh, highway driving and lane following assist. And they say that they'll make long trips less stressful and more comfortable. And this is amazing. Hyundai has a limited lifetime electric battery warranty of 10 years, including the powertrain. Hyundai says that will mean that the Ionix lithium ion polymer battery will, if, if it ever should need replacing, that they'll replace the battery and cover the recycling cost of the old battery pack for free. And that's only to the original driver though. Okay, last stories. Ah, uh, did you see what I did just there? I haven't got just one bonus story. I've got two bonus stories for you. <laughs> Didn't see that coming, did ya? No. All right, first one is renewable energy company Neom, who's expanding its capacity of the Hornsdale Battery Power Reserve. That's the one in South Australia, you know, the one that Elon Musk did the bet with, yeah. Anywho, they're gonna be expanding it by 50 megawatts or 64.5 megawatt hours. And again, it's being supported by Tesla. This will obviously help companies, individuals, and businesses keep the lights on even when the sun is not shining, the wind isn't blowing, or when blackouts occur in Queensland. What? Oh, di didn't you hear about that from our politicians, how the virtual power plant 
in South Australia actually say it's Queensland recently? No? It's kind of weird, but this little this little tuned on viewer, he, he, he knows what he's on about. And yeah, let me share some details about that for a second. The blackout comes via the Renew Economy website uh, where they detailed that in October, October 9 to be precise, the South Australian VPP, that's like a solar battery project that's been installed on hundreds of homes over there, they injected into the national electricity market when the Cogan Creek coal power station tripped and reduced the supply by, get this, 784 megawatts. That is a massive drop in power. So when the VPP, VPP, hmm, try saying that quickly, when it detected a drop in the power, it immediately kicked in and well, the power went from these residential batteries and helped the system return to normal. Isn't that amazing, right? Like, where's the fanfare or maybe a parliamentarian standing in uh, chambers and going, hey, this is what a lithium ion battery can do. Um, I kind of sound like someone else then, but you get the idea. Getting back to the story on the battery, the Hornsdale expansion, like this mega battery, in its first year of operation, saved consumers more than $50 million and shorted the network and been able to like react to outages like the one I just mentioned in milliseconds. The cost of adding the 50 megawatts is not fully known, but it has been supported both by the, uh, the South Australian government uh, through one of their funds, as well as ARENA. So, you know, this is a great initiative and I'd like to see more. Elon Musk proudly unveiled the Cybertruck and well, it was polarizing, wasn't it? Some people on the interwebs are saying that, well, maybe Elon was maybe smoking something when he dreamt up this vehicle. Just maybe, I myself, firmly believe it actually looks like it came out of the game Halo. Maybe it's actually something that my kids actually did in Minecraft. Uh, this guy also thought that maybe he actually had designed it already and beat Elon to it. I, I'm just not very sure and the reception so far on uh, Twitter has been rather negative. Um, I'd like to know your thoughts. What do you think of it? Those extremely harsh lines just are really jarring to me and it looks a bit too basic. I imagine that the tech's going to be awesome and, and, I, and the, the rear cargo that actually tucks in on itself is pretty impressive. You can, char you can charge your um, electric um, you know, four-wheel bike on it. That's also pretty cool. Um, what else? It can tow. Oh my gosh, can this thing tow? I'll give you some numbers. Hang on. The entry-level model is going to be able to tow 3,400 kilograms. Uh, so the weekend is not ruined. No. Uh, the mid-range is going to be able to tow 4,500 kilograms and well the biggest model is going to be when mind you when I say this they're all actually the same size I'm talking about battery size here and also number of motors I'll get to that in a minute um, the biggest one's going to be able to tow 6,300 kilograms that's pretty significant and well geez there was a, a lot of fun in this uh, exhibit and I think Elon was having a lot of fun up until this moment in time yeah Oh my fucking god. Well. Yeah. Yeah. That's the glass breaking when he didn't want it to. And well, if you hear uh, what Elon says when France goes break that window, have a listen. Oh my fucking god. Well. Yeah, <laughs> he said that. And uh, look, they did a demonstration before that by dropping uh, through a silo, uh, that big metal ball, and it didn't break the glass. And unfortunately, when France had a good go at it, it broke and well that is now going to be folklore meme for forever and ever <laughs> yeah gosh anyway this thing has got some very tough and special steel um panels so you know france also gave it a good hit with the baseball bat and you no know, dents so that's gonna be great for car parts because let's face it nothing worse than getting door is there no absolutely not and uh and i think real the real selling message on this thing is going to be well one, the price, which I'll tell you in a moment, but also its speed. Oh my gosh, the entry level, the single rear uh, motor version is gonna be able to do uh, from zero to 100 in 6.5 seconds. That's a really respectable time. And that little sucker is gonna be able to go 400 kilometers. Great, all right, the mid range, that's gonna be the dual motor version, <laughs> the dual motor version, that's going to be able to go 480 kilometers and get to 100 k's per hour in 4.5 seconds. Again, 
that's pretty crazy fast. And to get that sort of speed out of something so large, that's so utility based, my hat's off to you, uh, Tesla. Then the, the real big number here though is the three motor version. We're gonna call this plaid folks because it's gonna be able to go from zero to 100 Ks per hour in about 2.9 seconds. And I say in about 2.9 seconds because I'm quoting times based upon the zero to 60 miles per hour. And when you convert that, so that's, that's, that's 96 Ks per hour. But that's getting too technical. All right, so uh, compelling, yes, divisive, very much so. Now the pricing and well, the timelines as well. We're gonna discuss these things, don't we? Let's get the basics out of the way. First up, it's no use doing a basic conversion from American dollars to, US, uh, to Australian dollars um, to do what's gonna be in Australia, because that doesn't work. So just to give you an example, the entry level single rear drive is gonna come in at roughly $57,000 Australian, but no, we've gotta put on taxes, import fees, stamp duty, luxury car tax if it's applicable, um, it, and then Tesla's delivery fee. So I put it into my special online calculator that I use for the Tesla Model 3, and that was pretty accurate when um, I use that. And we'll get this. This little baby is gonna be coming in at $76,879. That's only like several thousand dollars more than the Model 3 Standard Range Plus. That's phenomenal, That's crazy amazing. Now, if you ask me, you know how Apple has got the Apple tax? Basically, you just put um, a computer and it's $1,000 and you put an Apple logo on them and it's suddenly $1,500, yeah? Tesla's kind of the same because in Australia, they're very much a premium brand. And looking at other cars, like other you know, premium uh, luxury four-wheel drives, they, they cost this much money and well, a lot more. So I'm gonna say this and mark my words, when it actually does come out in Australia, we're gonna rewind to this video and I'll see how right or wrong I was, ready? So, my guesstimate's gonna be, by 2023, that's when it's gonna come in Australia, it's gonna come in at $84,000. Yeah, okay, so that's just a rear wheel drive, 400 kilometers of range, zero to 100 time at 6.5 seconds. The middle level is gonna cost about $72,000 converted, all right, but that's just converted, let's whack all those taxes on, and it comes in now at $94,000, plus some change. Getting up there, a little bit ouchy, definitely. But look, the long range Model 3 is about that price. And I'm thinking this is actually probably very much akin to that. Um, look, this is gonna be able to go to 480 kilometers and um, you get a lot of vehicle for that money. So I think that price is pretty much right on. But let's apply the $8,000 premium because it's Tesla. And that might actually then settle on about $102,000. Yeah. Then finally, the tri-motor plaid model with a crazy fast time, is gonna set you back an eye-watering $140,000. Yikes. Very, very expensive, but you know what? There are a lot more expensive cars in Australia right now and people will pay for it. Yeah, they, they will. So, all right, time for mail time. And well, the most controversial story I think that <laughs> broke last week was the Cybertruck, the Tesla Cybertruck. And oh my gosh, of all the comments, there was like some really positive ones. There was a few negative ones, but you know what? My, you guys are great because there was a lot of constructive observations and people were kind of like, well, yeah, it kind of looks maybe ugly or, you know, the beauty's in the <laughs> eye the beholder. But other people were, I don't know. I think that my take on it so far is that uh, it's a very divisive truck pickup truck we're going to call it and um yeah let's let's read some of the uh, more positive comments that people had to say about it so d hinks one says that give it time i believe the innovation around the accessories rack shells and campers are going to equally blow minds already people are already coming up with foldable trailers with their own power assist reducing drag increased range, innovation, and imagination. And there are endless possibilities. I put a refundable 100 deposit down. Cheers. TV Channel One wrote, I don't expect a modern car to look good. This is in the 60s. Much more interested in the scratch and, well, car park dents. The solid exterior is such a middle finger to the other car companies, uh, the way in which they do business. Selling as tissue paper cars with, well, pricey parts. 
So they were pretty good observations, and yeah, you know, I must say that uh, the, <laughs> the demonstration with the sledgehammer was massively impressive. Uh, the ball, they just couldn't have done it. I think the trickery, you know, like in it, th those people on stage, they're dressed like they're in a magic show. Don't you reckon? <laughs> Comment below if you agree. Um, they, when they dropped the ball through the silo onto the glass for the demo, they should have just left it there. And people were like, yeah, fantastic. Good job, Elon. Good job, Franz. But then inviting Franz over to, you know, mimic what he did with the sledgehammer, with the ball onto the glass, they should have just stopped. And um, after the first one, yeah, definitely, absolutely should have stopped. But they did too. So what does what the press pick up? You know, I've seen Forbes write about it, CNET write about it, you name it. If you've got a fudster out there, they're writing about it. And so that's really, really bad publicity. I digress. So... Again, you great little viewers out there came up with some really good observations, not negatives, just, you know, these sort of things. Anti-Comet Warrior wrote, Yeah, no doubt the presentation could have been better. I think it wanted to crawl in a hole. If the truck was more traditional, it would have been a hit. I love the front, but hate the roof and back end. Need some bevels on those sharp angles. Still, a truck is a tool and this thing looks promising. Still just a concept version. Great thoughts there. Good work. Love that. Sequi Tur wrote, Tessa's answer to the Bollinger. A bit disappointed in the overall look, but very relieved that it's not any further out there. I can accept the looks because the overall value, but regarding utility, you need extended mirrors for towing. The range will get crushed by towing. Not sure that I can see this truck on a construction site. I haven't looked at other YouTubers out there who are obviously bigger than me, like uh, Brian for 91 Tesla. He was the same. He was imagining uh, both on the way to the event about, wow, when I stop in the future, I'll be seeing these massive cyber trucks and this will be great times. And then after seeing the thing in real life, he was very much disappointed by it. And on the way back home, it was like, I just can't foresee people moving from the maybe Ford F-150 or whatever other car you got. Um, and I'm not going to be seeing these out there because it's just too radical. And, you know, see, I, th I truly believe, and look, tell me if I'm wrong, um, utility truck owners, they tend to fall in to the like, uh, I love my F-150 or I wouldn't be seen dead in anything but a VW Amarok or maybe a Dodge Ram or... Insert any other brand you want right here. Looks are very subjective and buying a car is like a complex interplay between specs, price, ongoing costs, EVs, hello, and well, looks. Looks are very important and this is too polarizing and just out there for most people. I applaud, I applaud the brave decisions that like Tesla has made here and it specs with massive range, onboard power, like air power, uh, with the, um, sorry, uh, the electrical power, like 110 to 240, the air compressor, hello, and low gate. Obviously, the sheer size and its brute, you know, strength of those doors is going to be a real thing for a lot of people. But I think that realistically, it's not going to shift buyers away from those cars that they already love. But look, I could be wrong, and it's going to be ages before it gets to Australia. <laughs> um, unlike some viewers out there who maybe think it's coming in 2021. Typically, I don't know, I just feel that this is a bit of a swing and a big miss. Okay, into some news stories for this episode. And well, first one's about cobalt mining. Check this out. Isn't it awesome? What is it, I hear you ask? Well, ladies and gentlemen, this is a deep sea Cobalt Miner. Oh yeah, and this bad puppy is going to pillage the ocean floor for cobalt. Yes siree. Why Chris? Think of the poor sea creatures, the plant life and more. But no, the evil Chris says that you need cobalt for our mobile phones, our batteries in our laptops and well importantly, our EVs, damn it. You see, cobalt's an important element in lithium ion batteries that stabilize them. In the Tesla Model S, the battery composition is such like 80% nickel, 15% cobalt, and 5% um, aluminium. 
And the amount of cobalt in uh, batteries varies from uh, maker to maker. And look, it's something that's only using a few grams up to maybe a few kilograms when you're thinking about EVs and no massive batteries. But, and this is a big but, we don't need this. Oh, I mean, come on people. We already know how the ocean plays an important part in both our weather, food supplies, and well, a lot more that we are yet to discover. So why or oh why are we even considering this? Elon Musk and Tesla have been working feverishly to reduce the need for cobalt in the um, in their cars. And a demonstration of that is already in the Tesla Model 3 and Powerwall 2. And the chemistry in that has been changed from the 15% of the Model S down to 3% just in those uh, Model 3 and uh, Powerwall. Please viewers, I ask you, follow the link down below, check out the story that's actually on BBC and maybe and no, not maybe, do share it on your socials and say enough already, we do not need anything like this. Whilst the world's eyes were focused on the Tesla Cybertruck, another car maker actually introduced a new car to their lineup. Who? Audi, with their e-tron Sportsback. This one model will be available in Australia in 2020 and features a choice of batteries that will get you from 320 to 446 kilometers of range. That's using the EPA method, so Really good, absolute real world range. Powered by dual electric motors with a total output of 265 kilowatts, or about 350 horsepower for those playing along in other countries that use that method. The starting price is anticipated to be about $114,000 Australian when it goes on sale next year. This thing's gonna feature not one, but like three screens from like um, uh, 8.6 inches to 12.3 inches and will enable you to use both your voice control with Alexa and haptic touch feedback. The virtual mirrors will be a game changer along with, well, just a pretty good looking appealing car. One last story, and this is just for a little fun as it's like another concept car designed for urban environments or last mile journey. Designed by Big Rep, um, this technology will, in theory, enable companies to buy the massive 3D printers and make EV cars and motorbikes in hours, not days. And the benefit of being able to like tailor make it to local bylaw requirements. The design to me is very reminis reminiscent of cars like from iRobot and Minority Report. And well, these are purely concept cars. There is, there's no specs on motors or battery and range and the like, obviously, but what do you think? Is this something that you would like to see? Does it actually mean like cheaper forms of transport and that, well, you wouldn't need uh, a massive uh, aluminium press like what Tesla uses in their factories. So I think it could actually revolutionize the production of cars. Before I go, I've got a winner to announce and for the Tesla Model 3 uh, performance pedals. But before I do that, if you don't win today, you could always maybe win this next week with thanks to EV Armor. Tomorrow I'm dropping a video on the installation of these little um, uh, wraps <laughs> and um, uh, watch out for that. And anyone who lives in Australia or America can have a chance to win it because I'm not only giving just the one, I'm giving away the two. And uh, yeah, watch out for that. All right, the winner of the Tesla Model 3 performance pedals is... Drum roll. Oh, oh, uh... Nigel Farrier. Congratulations, Nigel. These are coming your way. Um, and he won them just by being a subscriber and writing in the comments, winner. Easy as that. No, no dramas whatsoever. All right. Hope you've enjoyed this show. If you have, please do subscribe. If you want to support me for as little as a coffee a month, join me over on Patreon. Otherwise, you do nothing. Be good. Be green. Our EVs, damn it. Sorry, Harry. Sorry. We got a bit carried away there.